Hey there everybody, Nathan Nelson here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, one of the things that I've been doing on this channel for a while now is a little series called How I Got the Shot. And what I used to do in that series was I would take you guys behind the scenes on my shoots, then I would take you through the color grading and then into the post-production and show you how I came to the final image. But I sort of cut out that whole color grading post-production aspect of these videos just to save on some time. I just felt they were getting a little bit long in the tooth. But you guys, as the viewer, have said, you know, well, what about the color grading? What about the retouching? I wanna see how you got to that final image. So today we're gonna be creating images that look exactly like this, some color beauty portraits. And I thought, you know what, what a perfect time to bring you guys back into some of my color grading and my retouching, being that we're shooting beauty portraits as well as in color, which is something that I don't do a lot on this channel. So with that, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, I don't really think we even need an intro. We know what we're here for. Let's make some pictures. So here we are in the studio. I'm gonna walk you through each piece of gear that I'm using one piece at a time. Now my key light is an AD600 Pro with the Stro Pro optical snoot attached. And if you take a closer look, you can see that the optical snoot is casting a shape of light on my model's face. Now for those of you that don't know what an optical snoot is, it's this modifier right here. Now what this does is it attaches to the front of my light and then I can take little shape-shifting gobos, drop them in, and it allows me to just project different shapes of light onto my subject or my background, anything like that. It just allows me to create what I feel is really interesting light. Now for this though, I wasn't actually using a, uh, a gobo. I was using this, which is the Stropro framing shutters. Now what this is, is four blades that you can move around to create pretty much any four-sided shape that you can think of. And it just allows you to be a lot more creative with the light. So now that I found the shape that I wanted, I metered the key light to F4 at one two hundredth of a second at ISO 400. Now the reason that I'm using ISO 400 is as awesome as this modifier is, it also is essentially a black hole when it comes to lighting. It sucks up a lot of light. It takes a lot of light pumping through it in order to create these shapes. Now, rather than shooting at ISO 100 and having to shoot my light at full power and having to deal with those really slow recycle times, I often just bump up my ISO, and in this case, to ISO 400, so that I could shoot my light at about a quarter power. And that allows the recycle time to happen a lot quicker so that I can, you know, I'm not sitting around just waiting for my light to constantly recycle. So with my key light being metered to F4 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 400, that also means that my camera needs to be set to F4 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 400. Now for the background, I'm using a 12 by 12 shoot through scrim, which I'm blowing out to a pure white using two 8600 Pro heads firing into Pro Photo medium deep umbrellas. Now the reason that I set my background up this way was that I wanted to have the light wrapping around my model's neck, chest, and shoulders while leaving her face dark. Now to achieve this, I placed the model a few feet away from the backdrop and metered this light to F6 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 400. Now the reason that I metered the backdrop to F5.6 is to get that pure white. The only way you can get a pure white backdrop is if you actually overexpose it. So if I had metered it to F4, just like my camera and my key light, that background would have actually fallen to a light gray. So in order to get pure white, you actually have to meter your background to be at least one stop over your key light. So in this case, my key light was F4, my background is then set to F5.6, and that allows it to blow out being pure white. So with just the background lights firing through the scrim, this is what the image looks like straight out of camera. And then when I add in my optical snoot as the key light, this is what it looks like straight out of camera when we put it all together. So as I take you guys through a little bit of a walkthrough of this lighting setup, I just really wanted to touch base on the gear. Now I'm obviously using a 12 by 12 scrim as my background for this portrait to give me that wraparound light. And a lot of people will see that and say, well, I don't have room for a 12 by 12 scrim or I don't have a 12 by 12 scrim. Well, it's not necessary in order to create this portrait. It's just the gear that I have. It's the gear that I like to use. So that's what I use to make it. But if you had any large modifier with say like a, a large Octobox or a large softbox or even a large umbrella with a diffusion panel on the front of it, as long as your model's frame can fit within that modifier, you can create this portrait. I just happen to have the 12 by 12 at my studio, so that's what I use. But if all you have is one large modifier with one light, you can create this portrait just the same. It's not where I want you to look at these videos and say, oh, well, I don't have room for a 12 by 12 scrim or I don't have a 12 by 12 scrim or anything like that. Just pay attention to what the light is doing 
and then use the modifiers that you have in order to create the portraits that you want to create. So with that being said, before I take you guys through the color grading and the retouching, I just wanted to show you a few of the final images from this shoot. Okay, so here we are in Capture One. I'm gonna take you guys through what these images look like straight out of camera. So as you can see here, these are the five images that you know were essentially my top picks from the shoot. And I think what we're going to do is, we're gonna use this one as the color grade and retouch for this section of the tutorial. So in order to do my color grade, I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna come into my styles, and I'm gonna select this Summer 2.0. Now the reason I love this is that it actually makes it feel a little bit more like she was actually standing in front of a window, something like that. If I show you guys the before and the after, you can see here, the before is nice, but the after, it just warms things up, just makes everything feel a little bit more window lit. And that's essentially with that shaping that I created with my optical suit, I wanted something that just felt a little bit more natural. So here we go with that. So that's the after and the before, after, and the before. So now that we've got our color set, I'm gonna take you guys, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna brighten up the eyes a little bit here. So we'll come in on the eyes and I'm just gonna come up to my folder here. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna select my masking brush here. And so I'm just gonna draw in on here and I'm just gonna turn on my mask here so you can see where I'm drawing. So you can see there's this little paint of red in there. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. And now if I turn that mask off and I come over to my exposure, if I bump this up, you can see that it's starting to brighten up the eyes. But I don't like the way this looks. It looks a little rough. So what I'm gonna come up is I'm gonna right click on that layer and I'm gonna select Feather Mask. And if I turn on my display mask here, you can see as I dial this back, it becomes a little bit harder. If I dial this forward, it starts to feather it out, just makes it a little bit softer. So if I put this probably around yeah, like the 12 to 13 range, we'll apply that. If I turn this off and on, you can see it's just adding a little bit of light into the eyes. Now I'm gonna bring up my contrast on that just a touch, and I'm gonna bring up my clarity just a little bit here. So if you can see on that, so if we zoom out on this, as you can see, it just, it pops just a little bit of color into the image, and that's even just a little bit bright, so I'm gonna dial that down just a touch, 0.6, there. That looks awesome. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a PSD. Now the reason that I export as a PSD is when I send this type of image to more of like a high-end printer, that kind of a thing, they prefer PSD files. They're larger, they're easier for them to work with, they've got some kind of range in them if they need to make any adjustments. So all I'm doing is I've created a recipe uh, as a PSD export to send it to a subfolder called PSD, the image file name, it's at 300 pixels per inch at 100%, and I'm just gonna export this and uh, we'll open it up into Photoshop and do the final retouch. Okay, so now here we are in Photoshop and the first thing I'm gonna do is just clean up the skin a little bit. Now the way that I do that is I come over here and I select my healing brush tool. And I'm just gonna come in and just kind of find any areas that need just little hints of cleaning up. Now Summer already has fantastic skin, so there's not gonna be a lot here to do. But just little bits here that uh, just need a little quick retouch some hairs. So what I would normally do on an image like this for the retouching is I would actually come in and I'd get pretty, uh, pretty picky about the little bits of hair and stuff like that that are kind of sticking around. But for the sake of this tutorial and time, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a, a speed retouch if you will, just to uh, kind of knock this out and give you a really good idea of 
what I do when it comes to final retouches on my images. So that's looking pretty great there. I'm just gonna take out this little bit in her eye. And one thing I did do was I added this little uh, red uh, follow along dot because I found that a lot of you when you were watching my uh, retouching tutorials is you couldn't tell where my cursor was. So just let me know in the comments below if that, uh, if that works better for you or if uh, it's annoying or what it is. It's a little distracting for me, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'll make do for you guys. Now, the other thing too, is she's got this little tattoo here that's a number seven, and I have no issues with the tattoo, but it is something that just draws your attention when you're viewing this image full screen. I just found that my eye was always going down to her shoulder trying to figure out what that was. So I am going to get rid of it just for the sake of, uh, you know, not drawing attention away from her face and the light, which is, you know, where I want the attention to go to. There we go. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to go to my filters and I'm going to select my portraiture plugin. Now, this is just a really easy way to kind of like smooth out skin a little bit, that kind of thing. And what I do is I set the top two sliders all the way to the left and the next two all the way to the right. And then I'll just come in, I'll make a selection here and I'll just find an area where I need to uh, just find it just kind of smooth out a little bit and then I'll do my addition and I'm just going to select a little bit onto the darker tones of her skin as well just to watch those kind of mold in. And then I always set it to create a new transparency mask. And the reason for that is that when I come into this, it creates its own mask. I can deselect this. I can see exactly where the mask is being applied and I can come through over to my uh, erase tool here and I can erase anything where I don't want the mask to actually affect the image. So her lips, her eyes, her teeth, her hair, different things like that. So I'm just gonna erase those off of the mask. Come up into her nostrils here. And then you can come in, you can see how much the mask is actually applying. So it's a little bit heavy, so I'm actually gonna come up, I'm gonna drop this down to about 75%. And I feel like that is a good spot there. And then I'm just going to merge these down, come out and I can just do a little before and after. And again, it's not a huge difference that you can see on the screen here. If I come before and after, I'm just kind of cleaning things up a little bit, not doing anything overly dramatic. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my dodge and burn action. And this action is completely free. I will link it down in the description below. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my dodge here. I'm gonna make sure that my mask or my paintbrush, sorry, is set to white, that I've got the paintbrush selected. And then if I come up into here, I've got the hardness set to zero. Then with my flow and opacity, opacity will be 100%, but the flow is gonna be around five to 7%. And the reason for that is we wanna be able to kind of paint in the areas that we're working on. So I'm going in with the dodge tool right now and I'm just kind of getting rid of a few of the shadow areas that uh, I find a little bit distracting. I'm just kind of smoothing things out a little bit just so that it ends up being just a lot, little bit nicer transition from the lights to the darks. And I will actually say that this red uh, indicator to find my mouse is super distracting for me. It's hard to see what size I've set my uh, my cursor to. So if you guys love it and if it makes sense to you, I will keep it uh, when I do these retouching bits. But if it's not something that is really giving you guys any type of uh, added bonus, it is definitely gonna go away. It's one of those things where it's, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit hard to see my cursor. Now I'm going to come in down into here and just to kind of show you guys a little before and after of what I'm actually doing. So if we come in, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. If I turn this off and on, you can see like, especially down in this area here and on our cheek here, when I turn this back on, it's just smoothing those areas out a little bit, just creating a little less 
you know, shadow definition in these little areas that are natural on the skin, that kind of a thing. Natural from the light, A being a hard light and transferring across and B just, you know, our skin just has shape to it. So I don't wanna lose any of that texture, but I do wanna smooth things out. So as you can see, when I turn this off in these different areas here, you can see that there's a little bit more texture there. When I turn it on, it just smooths things out, just makes it a little bit more of a, a beauty style portrait. And I'm just gonna do a little bit more on here. And like I said, if I was doing like a full massive beauty retouch, I might come into this a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this kind of like lightning into the eyes. But uh, for the sake of this tutorial, give you guys a good idea of what I do and get it, you know, relatively close without being super anal about uh, everything. I'm just gonna kind of do, like I said, the, the bit of the speed retouch. And like I said, Summer's already got amazing skin, so there's not a lot that I really have to do here. So if I take that and I turn it off and I turn it on, like I said, some of these areas here, even that little bit in her eyes, turn it off, turn it on. It just makes things just a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna flatten that down. Then uh, now I'm going to do what's called essentially a global dodge and burn. So that first one was more of a spot dodge and burn. This is more of a global. So I'm gonna kind of go through and I'm gonna take my burn tool again, white brush set to 100% opacity and a flow of around 7%. And I'm just gonna do a couple of little strokes in here just to kind of bring out a little bit more of the, uh, the shadow area. Make sure that I'm not losing any shaping on the face. Come around her lips, tiny bit here. So if I turn that off and on, you can see just especially in the bridge of her nose, different areas like that right in here. When it's turned off, when I turn it on, it just highlights it just a touch. Again, we're not, changing the image, we're essentially just kind of bringing out the better features of it. So I'm gonna come in with my dodge tool and again, I'm just gonna add in just a little bit of light into here, just to smooth things out a little bit, make those transitions just a little bit more poppy, throw a little bit of light into her lips and her teeth. That's looking pretty darn good right there. I'm gonna lighten this area just a touch. Awesome. Now if I turn that off and on, as you can, you can see, it's just making areas kind of like pop a little bit more. It's just giving everything just a touch more shape without changing the shape of the image. So if we go here and we kind of start as, a, this is where we started and this is where we end. It's not night and day because we don't want it to be, we want to do the work with our lighting, but it does just help to kind of bring out those finer features and give that little added oomph to our final image. And so with that, that's another episode of how I got the shot wrapped up and in the bag. Now, hopefully you guys picked up something from this that you can use in your shoots going forward. If you have any comments or questions, use the comments box down below. That's what it's there for. As always, I appreciate you guys being here and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Cheers.